All the characters in the story are over 18 years old. It was unanimously decided to spend the winter holidays outside the city. A large, spacious house in which the grandparents of two brothers, their father's parents, met their well-deserved old age. A huge plot with a fruit-bearing garden and the most important pride is the sauna, built literally last year. It was here that a large family was to spend the holidays, and even the father was supposed to arrive a few days later. My grandfather worked at the factory all his life, starting from the very bottom and reaching the head of the shop by retirement. He started without having any clear education behind him. He always relied on his excellent support, his wife, and in many ways thanks to her he graduated from college first, became a master, and then he had to go to college. His wife, whom he had known since school, waited for him to leave the army. Sometimes with restrained rudeness, but more often with affection, she always guided and motivated her husband. In the end, she worked at the same enterprise as a paramedic, staying close to her husband, who was a reliable support and pillar of stability for her all her life. They initially accepted their daughter-in-law with caution. A young girl who came from a village a thousand kilometers away and just entered the institute. She was too beautiful, which means, in the opinion of her father-in-law and, first of all, her mother-in-law, she could commit treason under the hail of attention from other men. Modesty and at the same time good-naturedness, which the daughter-in-law showed, bribed her husband's parents and over time they accepted her as their own daughter. And when she gave birth to their grandchildren, it was even possible to doubt who they loved more, their own son or her. The marriage of the parents was an example for their son, who was their equal in everything. He did everything for his wife and his sons and, in general, maybe not 100% but still received from them the necessary nourishment for further achievements. The brothers were excited. Despite the fact that the holidays were to be spent in a fairly large house, with a lot of places where you can retire, nevertheless, grandma and grandpa will be present all this time, which means it will be much more difficult to do everything that they did with their mother at home. Recently, the brothers have realized the most important thing for themselves in their relationship with their mother, namely, she will allow them everything if they really want it. It was enough for them to show a little perseverance, as a light would light up in their mother's eyes. In the end, it was decided between the brothers that in the coming days, after arriving at their grandparents, they should not rush things. First you need to look around where, what and how. Look at the habits of your beloved grandparents and their usual daily routine. The brothers did not even think to tell their mother about their plans. Now she belongs to them, which means she already agreed to everything in absentia. Finally, the long-awaited and slightly exciting day of departure for everyone. But the eldest son had a slightly different routine. At the beginning of last summer, he started going to the local gym for training. His body was still growing, but he was no longer essentially a boy, and therefore he made a decision for himself to develop not only mentally, but also physically, and even had already achieved significant success in this regard. On the day of departure, he planned to visit the gym for the final most grueling workout before he allowed his muscles to rest for two weeks, and after the class, go to his grandparents. Thus, the journey would take him two hours by bus and another half hour on foot. Knowing how impatient his younger brother could be, he instructed not to distract his mother from the road, because it was she who had to drive the car, and generally be more restrained. This time, the elder gave his best and exhausted, but insanely pleased, he left the hall. While he was riding the train out of town, he had time to think and fantasize. The younger one can easily persuade her to stop somewhere on the side of the road and use her very close to the road. They can be in the back seat right now, doing some things. The guy started to get jealous. And yet, more than jealousy, the eldest son experienced endless envy. I should have gone with them, and now my younger brother, and I would take turns using it. Cars would have sped past us but none of the drivers had any idea what was going on in the back seat of an SUV parked at the curb. Finally, unable to withstand the pressure of uncertainty, he called his mother on his mobile. Jealousy tore at his heart. The beep. One more. Time seemed to have stopped completely, and the beeps became infinitely long and muffled. One more. Yes, son. The calm voice of the mother from the speaker of the phone. Mom, are you okay? Have you arrived yet? It's okay, son. We got there very quickly. The mother was clearly smiling, touched by her son's concern. 
Or maybe she just guessed the real reason for the call. Ah, well good. So there are no adventures on the road? The eldest son asked hopefully. And what kind of adventures can happen? The mother answered the question with a question, and it seemed that her smile only became wider at that moment. Well, you know, a small brother could behave badly. The young man continued to carefully probe the ground. No, I'm telling you, we got there fast. We've even managed to put things out and settle down. Grandpa and Grandma are very happy and in the evening we will have a festive dinner. Everything is ready for it and now we have a lot of free time. We don't even know what to do with ourselves now. We're just waiting for you. Oh well, okay. I'll be there in two hours. That's it, bye. The eldest son visibly cheered up. When the young man finished the conversation, a thought flashed through his mind. And now we have a lot of free time. We don't even know what to do with ourselves now. For the rest of the bus ride, the guys stared out the window in silence and concentration, trying not to think about anything else. The young man arrived at the station and walked along a country road to the right house. There was almost no snow. Winter has been quite warm so far. There was a pleasant pain in my legs, which happens after a good workout, and in general everything was conducive to a good mood. But the guy's face was thoughtful focused, and he walked with a firm gait to meet his relatives as soon as possible. Finally, a large, painfully familiar two-story house of his father's parents appeared in the distance. Of course, this large building closed the street, and therefore the windows of the facade looked with their black eye sockets at the approaching young man. Despite the winter season, the sun was shining in the spring, and therefore it was quite difficult to see what was happening inside. Coming even closer, the young man saw familiar coloring in the window on the second floor, where the brothers usually lived when they stayed here. It was his mother's dress and she, in person, was wearing it. As he got closer to the house, the young man was able to see his mother. She was standing by the window and seemed to be swaying slightly. The woman's head was tilted up. The brother himself was not visible in the darkness of the room. And for sure, grandma and grandpa are at home right now. The woman's eyes opened. She lowered her gaze. This little brother noticed me and told his mother to look at me. The young man guessed right away. Then the mother shut her eyes sharply. Either he's teasing me, or he's bragging, or maybe both. The young man could no longer stand and watch in silence. Any attentive passerby, approaching the house at a fairly close distance, could have raised his gaze to the second floor and no doubt guessed that something was happening to this woman now. The door of the house was unlocked and he entered. At home, his grandfather's firm handshake and his grandmother's joyful lamentations awaited him. Why are you so flushed? Outside, it seems to be frost-free. Are you sick? Grandma asked anxiously, examining her grandson from head to toe. Yes, no. I was just walking fast. Where are mom and brother? The young man asked casually. They arrived three hours ago and started helping us. They didn't even have time to put things out but they're already helping us, Grandma began to tell with a laugh. And we have everything almost ready, but you won't understand our daughter-in-law. It will help here and there. So we almost forced them to settle down with us. An hour ago, she went upstairs to help Junior settle in. So they're still there? Grandma, I'm a little tired from the road. I'll go and take off my things. The eldest grandson did not let him finish. The young man climbed the creaking stairs. The door of the room was ajar. The young man stopped. I listened. The guy looked inside. They were making love. Everything was as his imagination had painted it when he saw them on the street. Don't I know how she screams? The eldest son thought. It's amazing how she's holding herself back now and how much effort she's putting into it right now. He turned around and looked at his older brother, who had already entered. Hello, he said to the elder. However, his breathing has not yet recovered. You're crazy, hissed the older brother. You didn't have time to arrive. You could have been caught at any moment. Stop, the younger one stopped him, still catching his breath. Everything that happens downstairs is clearly audible here. The stairs creak so that no one goes upstairs unnoticed, and by the way, neither do you. I saw perfectly well how you came, here the younger one smiled rapaciously. I heard your whole conversation downstairs and how you got up and stood at the door. It's a good sight, isn't it? The brothers continued to look at each other. 
rage, jealousy, and most importantly, desire were still bubbling in the young man. Okay, in fact, I know what you really want. I'm going to distract grandma and grandpa. Just in case, I'll leave the door ajar so that you can hear the approaching footsteps, so don't get too carried away. Already leaving the room, the younger one said, and be careful with her. He said the last sentence with a sly smile and finally left the room, right in the house of his father-in-law and mother-in-law, with a little brother, right in front of my eyes. Well, now she's going to get her own. The thoughts raced in the young man's head. It was as if he had forgotten about his brother and instantly turned all his rage on his mother. He didn't say anything out loud. With a decisive step, the eldest son headed towards his mother. When her youngest son called her upstairs an hour earlier, as he put it, to help with something, she had no idea how it would end for her. It's like her own son is going to take her right now. It's like she's going to cheat on her husband right at his parents' house. Without compromises and foreplay. Here and now. And what her youngest son would do to her. We have guests, the youngest son of his mother said with a smile, when his older brother was already approaching the house. She didn't turn around. I didn't have the strength. Thudding, firm footsteps in her direction. She turned around and saw the eyes of her eldest son. There was rage in them. He looked into her eyes, squatted down in front of her. Completely different feelings now overwhelmed him. I love you, he whispered. That evening, the brothers took turns taking advantage of this moment. Grandma and grandpa had no idea about anything and went about their business.